Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel and as you can see I have finally got the new DJI HDFPV system. I have a bunch of these units to do different kinds of builds and I thought on this occasion why not um, make a little video series and the first thing I'd like to talk about is this Gap RC Mark IV HD5 DJI, it's not the catchiest name, um, but that's a frame designed specifically to fit these DJI units and I think this one, it's a 5 inch, it's um, in my opinion it was the most compelling design I could find out there. So I will do a little unboxing today in this video of this frame um, and a bench review. Alright, so let's look inside of this box and see what we have here. So we do get two battery straps. Those seem to be pretty decent quality. I like the green. Um, not sure if it really matches the rest of the frame because it seems to be um, kind of gold, uh, titanium, gold colored. But okay, this looks like these are high quality battery straps um, with these metal buckles here. Uh, let's continue unpacking this. Okay, so here we got the hardware. Um, so these are like matte titanium gray colored standoffs and these look really good. And um, this is an eye catcher. These screws look really nice. I hope these are uh, steel screws, but seems to be, yeah. 12.9 um, so there's this kind of strength ratings on uh, screws if you notice 12.9 for steel screws is actually the highest you can get it's the highest highest grade uh, highest material grade screws available usually um, I mean of course there might be some uh, special um, special even better screws but uh, Regular off-the-shelf screws. Just look for these marking. There's like a 8 point something, 10 point something, and this 12.9 rating. If you see 12.9, this is the highest quality screws, and these are also um, in this really cool golden color. So this looks like some high quality hardware. Let's continue unboxing. These are some carbon parts. Seems to be links for the arms and the camera mounts. We get some stickers, Cap RC stickers, uh, more Gap RC stickers, and a manual. Now, pretty important. I just hate it when a product doesn't come with a decent manual. Um, this looks really decent, so shouldn't be any surprise when mounting this frame. These are TPU parts. Um, this seems to be the antenna mount and this seems to hold the unit. Now let's take a closer look at the TPU quality because that's something that, to be honest, is pretty common, especially for these Chinese manufacturers to include rather rough TPU parts. Let's take a closer look at these ones. Um, I mean, looking at it, that looks really decent. This one is a very clean print. Uh, let's look also at this antenna mount. This one is a more complex, and there's also another part. I don't really know what this is. Uh, this seems to be might be for a crossfire antenna that would be really neat if they include this already um, because I'm not going to run this on the DJI radio controller I will use crossfire uh, simply because not because I don't think the DJI radio controller isn't good it's just because I do not want to carry around another radio controller I already have two so <laughs> that's enough um, but this one's maybe a bit rougher but Still looks to me, and I hope you can judge by this video, looks to be pretty decent print quality. It's pretty good. Um, we got some zip ties. I don't know what these are for, but we will see a smaller battery strap. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be for the unit or for a GoPro. I don't know, but good that they included some Allen keys. I mean, you should have these tools at home usually, uh, but nice, nice move that they include this. Some uh, these are cute. <laughs> this is a sort of landing gear uh, foam things, so that you don't land too hard. Oh, it's very cute because I mean it's a freestyle frame. This will be smashed into concrete. Uh, so okay, but nice to include them. We have a battery pad, and oh, we we have a second battery pad. That's pretty neat. 
um, because those are annoying to replace if you uh, if you damage one of them or have to remove it to do some repairs on your frame. We get four arms and no fifth arm. I mean, it's always nice if they include a fifth arm. But okay, these look seem to be uh, chamfered edges, but I, I look at the carbon parts in more detail. Soon, let's first unpack this fully. Here we have the, the other carbon components and that's it. That's what you get in the box. Now, these are all the carbon parts this frame comes with and it's probably hard to judge just based on this video, but they look pretty good. They have nice chamfered rounded edges. There's no carbon dust. You can see my fingers are completely clean. I didn't have to clean anything here, which is a good sign for um, high grade manufacturing quality and overall makes a pretty good impression. I'm not that much of an expert in carbon fiber, so it's hard to judge if this is uh, highest grade, but this really looks pretty good. Now this arm is five millimeters thick, 4.93. I mean, the thickness of carbon fiber plates is never really perfect. It's a perfectly normal thing that there is some variation up to 0.1 millimeters. And here we're talking about four hundredths of a millimeter, so perfectly normal. These motor mounts here seem to be 16 by 16 to 19 by 19, which could be convenient for some motors, but I mean, honestly, today that isn't super relevant, especially for five inch, almost all motors will be 16 by 16, but still not a bad thing. This is the top plate here. This one is 2.56, so a 2.5 millimeter, which is interesting. This looks like a three millimeter to me. It's pretty solid and thick, same thing. Of the bottom plate, I would assume that this is the same thickness. Yes, it is. These are very precisely the same. Five seven, five six. So this could be the exact same piece of carbon they cut this out. Uh, the bottom and top plate also have nice rounded edges. Really clean machining. This looks pretty good. Then we get the smaller carbon parts here. So these are the links for the arms. These two here, they are. Two millimeters. Um, these are the cam camera mounts. Two point five. I don't know why these are two point five. That seems a bit overkill, but it could be to give the front part of the frame stiffness. And it also comes with these two. These are pretty interesting. This one goes in the front. This one goes in the back. And these give the frame some more impact resistance in the front and rear part, but. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about after assembling this frame. But so far, um, carbon quality looks pretty good. Carbon thickness and, and the, the overall design uh, looks pretty solid. I mean, things like um, like these X's here on the battery pad, I mean, that isn't something that's really perfect when working with carbon fiber. They probably sacrificed a bit of um, weight and stiffness for the looks, but it looks pretty cool. So I don't see anything about this frame in terms of design, carbon quality, carbon machining, or anything that worries me at all. Um, to the contrary, it looks pretty good. Okay, this was a pretty easy build. Let's see how much the result weighs. It's specified to be 121 grams. What I have here is 128. So slightly heavier because it's, uh, I mean, maybe they didn't take the TPU into account. Also, I added some stack screws already. That might explain the weight difference. Overall, it was easy to build. The quality is really high, so nothing that uh, wouldn't fit or was hard to fit. Everything was perfect. This is also really high quality hardware. It's, I'd say it's reasonably stiff. It's got separate arms held by these by these link plates here on top. So the construction is rather, uh, I mean, it's a rather conservative construction, but the advantage here is while it's still, it's a pretty flat frame, it's only, these standoffs here are only 25 millimeters, it still gives you the full height here of the 25 millimeters for your stack, so it's 
pretty slammed, but still, since there's no um, no sandwich plate here, really, which is something I also did on some of my designs, you, you get the full space between top and bottom plates to fit the stack, and uh, I will fit this Holy Bro Kakuti Teco combo, which is specially designed for the DJI unit, so I, I will have a... It, it includes a connector that makes it easier so that without soldering to just connect the DJI unit. And this should fit without any issues in here. It would also fit a 20x20 20 20 as well. And here in the rear, we have a 20x20 20 20 and 30x30 30 30 mount too, which probably won't be very useful because we have the unit here. But I mean, maybe there is some space here. So this could be enough for a 20x20 20 20 board. Now... I don't see what kind of board you would want over here because, I mean, there's way more space than you need here up front. And you don't need a VTX because you have the units are probably um, not very useful. But this could, I mean, this will have space for a receiver and anything you want. So overall, pretty good. Still got the hole here to mount an antenna. I mean, this one is useful as use less as well. So you can see, I mean, they just, it's obviously not a fully new design specifically for the DJI. They kind of adapted an existing design. So you still have these leftovers, like a hole for an antenna here, but they aren't really bothering me to be honest. This is okay. You could also, I mean, if one day you decide not to use the DJI system anymore, um, or you want to use this frame for something else and put your unit in another frame, this could be useful if it's um, also possible to build it without the DJI unit and with a classical analog setup. Now, what I already mentioned is it's got these sort of extra bumper plates here in the front. So this gives you a thickness of five millimeters in total, which is pretty cool. So if you really slam this in the ground, this should help it. It's got another one here in the rear, which now is pretty much useless because we have all this TPU here. So still something that is left of, I guess, the old design this was based on. Really cool thing is that it really comes with, this is really uh, a mount for Crossfire. This is pretty cool. Um, this also fits really nice. I mean, these print parts seem pretty good. No issue at all to fit them. So that's all I can say about this frame, basically. I, I really like how it looks. Um, seeps well thought through. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to build this. So to me, one of the best DJI unit frames, uh, at least freestyle frames, you can get at the moment. Okay, last thing is checking how the well the unit fits. So as you can see, it's here in its little TPU mount uh, where it's supposed to be. And I have to say here, I'm a bit more critical because this isn't really perfect. Not, not only because of GIP RC, also, DJI didn't do a very good job, in my opinion, when designing this little box because it doesn't have any real decent mounts. So there's no no holes, nothing. Uh, it just doesn't have any mounts. It's like they didn't think about putting it in a frame or different guys, different engineers designed this box that weren't concerned with actually um, mounting this in a frame in any decent way. So I don't know, that's why it sits in a TPU cage here. It could just have a, a 30 by 30 mounting pattern or something that just makes it easier to mount this. You could perfectly, for example, if it just had some um, threads here in the bottom, you could perfectly mount this on a 30 by 30, but the, the unit just doesn't, which I mean, this, this kind of bothers me. But okay, that's, um, <laughs> we don't have too much choice, so. It's the unit we have to use. Also, these antenna cables here are pretty stiff and I had to bend them a bit more than I like to fit them here uh, in this antenna mount. So this, it's, this is kind of forcing on the connectors and the antennas. That's not very good. Also, this cable here, I mean, the frame is pretty long and the camera sits a bit too far up front from my opinion. So it won't be possible to, because as you can see, I can't really push this down all the way. So it won't be possible to have this below the stack. I will somehow have to manage to get this through the ESC and the flight controller, or maybe it will also fit on top of the flight controller, but uh, it would have been better if the camera was a bit further back, but then probably they you would have props in view. 
so overall this isn't perfect but I don't know if there's a frame that actually does this better because and, and uh, I mean I'm working on, on designs for this unit not 5 inch but I can hear it's pretty annoying to design a frame that fits this unit the way DJI uh, designed it but still I think uh, it's the best system we have so far so let's just roll with it now that's about it for my little frame review. Uh, as always guys, I hope you found this video interesting and useful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.